You're tuned in to RX Radio. Movement prescribed. Brought to you by Prescript.com. A personalized approach to keeping you healthy and making your best even better. Your hosts, Dr. Jordan Shallow and Dr. Jordan Ginta. All right, so this is episode 200. On the nose. Yeah, maybe I'll finally get into the intro of one of these one day. I got it. It's a Kyle thing. Just message him. You yeah, I'll message in. Kyle. We'll just with, your, get with your hosts, Dr. Jordan Shallow and Dr. Jordan Jinta. But, and Killian Hamilton Esquire. There you go. There you go. <laughs> um, yeah, so today we're going to take a deep dive into the quote-unquote business of the online fitness industry and more so the um, inextricable link to skill versus will and understanding that when motivation uh, dwindles, it's often a combination of the skills involved to drive that motivation forwards. Yeah. It's like real actionable shit that if you know how to put together reps and sets and you're on a complete dial tone talking to someone, this is some, some very tangible things. So call it business, call it procedures, call it whatever you want, just to help kickstart your, even just your thought process around starting a business in the fitness industry skill versus will we got a few weeks we got a week left yeah on the registration for skill acquisition one more week uh starts january 18th so please go to the link in my bio um it'll be a direct click right to the skill acquisition page uh if not you can go to pre-script.com go to the courses page it will be there i'm not going to try and spell acquisition for you Um, but jump into the course. The course is going to take you through what you need to do with a client to drive their skill great enough. That way we'll have the constant motivation to stay training with you and push towards newer and greater goals. The idea, if we understand how we learn and we can unpack the barriers in front of learning, we can move people at an expedited pace to greater uh, and greater levels of skill in the gym, more exciting exercise. This for you as a clinician, uh, coach, or trainer is going to keep you engaged because I'm sure with the massive amounts of knowledge that you've acquired so far, there are things that are so far down the line that you want to teach, the quicker we can get the client to a position in which they can uh, recover from and learn them, it's only going to be better for both parties in the transaction. Yeah. So guys, do uh, do check out the episode. And obviously, if you guys are interested, go check out the links, Killian Bios. It's, it's going to be in my bio as well or head over to pre-script.com. Hope you guys enjoy the episode. If you have any questions, reach out on Instagram at Killian.Hamilton at the underscore muscle underscore doc. And uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoy. We'll talk to you soon. Confirm that that's, that's red. I see that's red. Red is for recording. The irony in the last one we recorded was uh, we were talking about the first episode we ever recorded and how Jenta and I just continued to record four seconds because we used to record on GarageBand in like the most ghetto setup ever. Now we got like Mission Control Houston Space Station. And you could argue that it's actually gotten worse because we didn't even get four seconds out of the last time we recorded it. Not even. Zero yeah. seconds. And we had a recant camera and we couldn't get the file off the camera. Yeah. So it's 200 episodes has actually been getting fundamentally worse. But I think nothing highlights the actual point of the episode quite like this experience. So for those of you who don't know what the fuck me and Killian are talking about, this is the second time we recorded this podcast because we recorded it once and it didn't record. Yeah. Or let me say, I did not hit the record button. So we finished it and we started talking bullshit about people. And that's when I thought I was hitting record to end the recording. It actually started the recording. So what we had was just six minutes of me and you talking bullshit about bullshit people which yeah. ironically probably would have been our most well downloaded episode yeah. of all time but yeah that's that is what we're going to talk about today we're going to talk about attrition attrition skill versus will all about the business all about the business Dude. and it's it's a weird thing because that there's no more there's no more pivotal epitomized conversation to have about business in the fitness industry than what we just talked about 100 percent. it's not going to work you're not going to hit record probably more of the times than you are going to hit record and you just keep doing it. And that's all it takes in a lot of ways in the early stages. And again, maybe like business is the wrong term and maybe like businessy people are going to get upset, but it's, this is the thing that helps drive the ship. This is the coal into the engine. And I think that's important too, where we, we look at business concepts and sometimes where I think people go astray in fitness is they look towards what you said is like these businessy business concepts. Right. And it's like, listen, the medium is the message here. You know what I mean? Like it is the cornflakes commercial 
of the online business industry. So it's like, you got to do what you got to do. And, and if that is podcasts, if that's stories, if that's weird engagement tools, like those are the mediums that you deal with. Yeah. We're not dealing with like bulls and bear markets. We're not dealing with like, you know, Tom Ford suits. Like we're dealing with like, all right, maybe you, you, you buy something off white and you flex, but that's the echelon. Like it that's is. really, and it's such a low, it's such a, it's a low barrier of entry, which in itself serves problems to the industry as a whole. Mm -hmm. Right. But it, the distance between the barrier of entry and the upper echelon of the fitness industry is very narrow. Like I can day trade and sit on fucking quest trade and play around with the stock market. Like I know what I'm doing, but I'm eons away from like some Bernie Madoff fucking Ponzi scheme, bajillion of dollars owning my own island where it's like the second you have an Instagram account, you're in play. Yeah. You're in play. Like, yeah. <laughs> it is really a roll the dice craft shoot, but you can stack the deck yeah. with a few simple concepts that we are going to talk about today. You can, you can come up with five aces and start playing and start playing hold them because it's just, it's not that hard. The distance between the two. I think just the eyeballs and the fear of consequences that don't exist, the fear of being wrong and not knowing maybe enough about your craft. All of that sort of mixed together with this imperfect science and this psychosocial experiment makes it a, a crippling feat for people attempting to grow their business in the fitness industry online. Yeah, and I, I think it's important to highlight, like, we're not saying you don't have to be credible. We're not saying you don't have to be extremely knowledgeable to be successful. But it's in the understanding that being credible and being knowledgeable and having a wealth of, of practice is what will defeat the lack of confidence that stops you from then driving your business forward. Right. And a lot of people would rather just enter, circle back into the echo chambers of academia. And to, and this is weird because we, our whole job is, is, is teaching people. And I'm to a certain point where it's like, look, yes, we need to know this, but it turns into like your null hypothesis of like, it doesn't matter until it matters. Right. So for a lot of the people, a lot of the time, these advanced training concepts, just like advanced business concepts, you will have to grow into that, mm -hmm. right? Like you are trying to, with some people talking about business and finance and things like that, and a really higher MBA level business concepts, there is a point where that will matter in your business. I can tell you, like when I started this, <laughs> I didn't even know what a bookkeeper was. I thought it was a librarian. I was like, <laughs> what, what do I need a bookkeeper for? So I could just get one of those ladders that go across and I could get my books out of like, well, I don't fucking read. I don't even know how to read. I'm an idiot. And it's like, okay, that, don't forget about that. Forget about that. Like if you don't have the confidence in your craft or the ability to hit publish on Facebook or Instagram, it's you are a long ways away from that mattering and maybe having to deal with the problems that face you today rather than trying to f prepare for problems that you'll never have to. It's the same with training. It's like, hey, I need to worry about off-season undulation. It's like, what? <laughs> what? Did, no, no, no. Why? For yeah. Karen? Works in the mail room? Fuck, you don't build up to fucking, you know, Terrell on whatever team in the NFL, then that'll matter. Mm -hmm. But it's like, it's people are just trying to leapfrog, right? They think if they know enough about business, that'll put them at that point in business. It's like, no, 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 it's not how it works. Got to put in the legwork. Yeah, exactly. Like you don't pay tax unless you make money. Right. Tax doesn't matter. Tax bracket doesn't matter to you. <laughs> Writing off whatever you write off for those who know how to write off that write off. Doesn't matter until you have something to write off. Right. So you know what? First, build something successful enough that you worry about taxes yeah. before you go asking people, what should I do about my taxes? Exactly. Before you have a single dollar in your account. Exactly. And it's like, all right, so let's lay out from the get go. Because again, you said it really well and I, and I want to highlight this again. You can't diminish the importance of honing your craft and your skill. Right? So there is a balance to be like, okay, you know... You know enough to work with this tier of individual mm -hmm. in a, a high level of like efficiency, high level of efficacy. Like you're going to provide a ton of value for this cohort of individual. So we're not diminishing like rule one is you got to know what the fuck you're doing, right? Because from that fundamental rule one stems the, the confidence to begin to step outside and begin to grow, grow the business around your skill set. I see so many good skill sets that have, they, they cannot take a step outside. So what do they do? They circle back. And then they circle back into these more advanced concepts where it's like, man, okay, we got that from step one out of the way. Everyone listening to this, you, you know how to train a client. 
and you might have some idea how to do it online. You have some sort of platform or template or, or a spreadsheet or something like that where you can host a client coaching interaction. Step one, that was a prologue. Chapter one yes. is where do you start? Chapter one, I start with do people know that you sell things? Number one. Number one. Right. Even, even honestly, before you know anything, why don't you test the waters and give people a chance to know you sell stuff? So, website. Big. Huge. And a fucking G Suite. So, help me God, if it's at Gmail, you're getting unfollowed and you're going six feet under. Right. You're done. You're done. Like, that's like the dude who has the plumbing company who writes in Sharpie his phone number on the side of his Grand Cherokee. Right. Get the fuck <laughs> out of here. You're not <laughs> stepping in my house. Exactly. <laughs> because you might not step out. Yeah. So, Set up a website, whatever Joe's training.com. I'm going to tell you how to make it right now. Do it. I don't know how to use the internet. It's a landing page. Yeah. It's a picture of you, high contrast or black and white, and it's a fucking contact form. Contact us. Contact us. Us. The enterprise. That the is. enterprise. Optics are huge. Yes. Right? Like, and you, you now it's funny because like, you you undermine your optics of like how busy you are. Like you don't actually portray how busy you are, what you do and the level you do it at. Like you downplay it because you're so busy. Yeah. And I'm the same. But there was a point where I was up playing how busy I was. Oh. Like, oh God, I've swamped. But now, now I'm fucked. Like I literally have like the entire day is if one thing, if we hit a red light, my whole day is fucked. Yeah. Right. This is going to, this podcast is going to have a hard stop. But like understand like the, the underlying psychology and optics and using, using social media to your advantage. A lot of people get weird with this. And if you're weird with it and you have this imposter syndrome, go learn more. Yes. Be confident that you can sit across the table from someone who knows nothing about training because these are going to be your clients at the early stages. Some of the clients that I work with in the NFL have a CSCS. Yeah. Like they're NFL players that have a CSCS. Why? Because they fucking lose 40 grand in their couch, right? Because like this is, so they, they, they come to play. So I need to know more than them. But it's like Karen from the mailroom. It's like you should feel confident in being able to, you know, contact us, right? Info at Joe's training. Please. I'm not Joe. I don't want to talk to Joe in an email. Like I don't want Joe to be that accessible. It's info at. Yeah. And I know info at prescript.com for the longest time. The arbiter of this email, the secretary of this email address was me. It's no longer that anymore. This stuff gets filtered. But you need to like... I look at your online business like how I used to look at clothing. Like I bought two XL shirts before I was two XL. Yeah. Now, comfortable. Yeah. I'm comfortable in the two X. It's like you need to be able to legitimize your business, and there's a few fronts in which you can do it. Step one: know that people sell something. No, no. Let people know that you sell something. Yes. Two: give them an avenue in which to purchase oh, the thing the, that you sell. The love of God. <laughs> Why is? So, and, and in saying that, I think like when, if language matters, we have to be very specific here. Don't, as much as you want to be not the most accessible person, don't make clients apply to train with you. Right. Like, what is that? Think you are. Application for coaching? Fuck you. You're applying to coach them. Yeah. Just give them a pay window. Right. Like a click direct to a checkout. Linktree is, I think, I don't get sponsored by them. I wish we had a little ad before this. Linktree. But anyways... It's a button that goes to a button that goes to a bank account. That is the world's greatest time to purchase model ever. I want coaching. I click coaching. I click PayPal. All of a sudden, there's money in your bank account, and then there will be a program in their email. Right. Make the time to purchase as quick as possible. This, go to my website, find a page, apply for coaching with me. Maybe I'll get back to you. Dude, too much. Yeah. Way too much yeah, here. Run into an old lady. Take 300 paces to the left. You're yeah. going to find a suitcase. In that suitcase, it's like, what do you, like, no. Especially the overcoming objection, oh. right? And when you've done it in a personal setting where you sat across someone, right? We've both done this. Shouts out good life, but not shouts out good life, but shouts out good life. Shout out good life. Shout out good life, right? Like, so sitting down in a consultation room and we've both looked grown men in the eye. And gone, that'll be $10,000. Yeah. <laughs> just, I've been laughed at. Like, I've been, because yeah. people don't understand. So it's like understanding that, again, the, the real world psychology that comes with selling high ticket training and how much easier the online psychology becomes. Because I can't dress up my optics. 
when I'm wearing the Adidas zip up red no. tracksuit in the Good Life consultation room. You got your bi bioelectrical impedance scale. You're telling this guy he's a fat piece of shit. He's going to die before he ever sees his daughter's wedding. Blah, blah, blah. Whatever grimy sales tactic you're going to use. It's like, I can't dress up. This is it. This is all I, this is the what I'm wearing. There's no high resolution. So if you can hack it in a situation like that, a landing page, a, just a link tree, a PayPal account, this should be a joke. But people can't even navigate the, 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 the objections and overcoming the objections in online. It's mm -hmm. like, dude, how do you do this in real life? Or like, how is it that you're making money as a trainer in real life? Online should be a fucking layup. This should be yeah. a joke. Right, so like simple things, clicks to purchase. Yeah, how, like literally navigate the steps and processes that it takes through the eyes of a client. You hit the gram, right? Because the integration of social to to like actually monetizing is where a lot of people get disconnected. And then what do they do when they don't have that connection? They just start arbitrarily accruing social capital. Yeah, and this will bleed into our conversation I want to have with you about uh, creating content that actually generates revenue, mm -hmm. right? Rather than just creating content that generates more social capital. Ha I don't play off, pay off this place or pay off my whip with followers. Yeah, I don't do it. Right? You have to be able to take them from somewhere and take them from social and bring them somewhere where they can give you money, right? And this, so this is going to be. PayPal is very easy to set up. Great. A little bit more integrated. Uh, Stripe is another payment processor. Have a website, point of sale, set up a, an email address at your email.com. Not, you know, the fucking skater boy 420 training oh. at, at Yahoo. Yeah. It's like .ca. It's like, get the fuck right there. That is, a, that is a barrier of entry. That is an objection that someone will have to overcome in their mind. If they see that, if they see that email address, they, if they don't even see a website, all of these are like, if my shoes are untied or like uh, my, my, I'm, I have fucking a mustard stain on my good life shirt. These are things that are knocking down trust. So what I used to do when I was a, I was a fitness manager at a good life. And I used to, when I used to interview someone, my office would be at the back of the gym. They'd come in the front and I'd stand at my office and I'd think one simple phrase. I wonder what that smells like. I'd look at a guy and I'd go, I wonder what he smells like. And if he looked like he stinked from like 50 <laughs> feet away, I'm eh, probably not hiring him. But it's the same thing. It's the shoes untied. It's the weird clothes. Yeah. It's the sweatpants. What are you doing? What are you doing? And it's like, guess what? If your name has numbers in it, in your email address, no. and $40 was too much of a down payment on your career that's apparently your dream, get a day job. Right. And I'm not being rude. I'm being helpful. If the idea that $40 over the course of 12 months for a G suite is a little bit too much commitment for you, honestly, go get a nine to five. It's very safe. Someone will direct you through your day. It's a better choice for you at this point in your life. Yeah. And like even the website, let's talk upfront costs, right? Because I've been doing this for a friend of mine right now and helping him out. It's like, all right, we're integrating a Shopify store, right? So what we've done first, we've gone to Google domains. We've looked for our domain name. Are you ripping someone off before you've started? Don't worry. If you're in the fitness industry on Instagram, you likely have the rest of your career to rip other people off. If I, every day I scroll and I go, oh, that's, those are my words. Great. So, but get used to it. As long as you have a good build, business built around the words that you say, when other people start sampling tracks like it's 90s hip hop, you're not going to give a shit because you're going to have dollars in the bank, right? So let that be as it were, but don't rip people off out of the gate. Mm -hmm. Find a domain name that's uniquely yours. You go to Google domains, you, whether you have an existing email with them or not, you find your URL. This is your storefront property. Let's try and trim it up. Let's get to the fucking point here. We made the mistake. I'm going to advise against this using dashes in URLs. Not the greatest idea. Prescript wasn't my first idea. Just want to call the company script. Little known fact. The engine to compromise called it prescript. The dash. I need to say pre dash script at every goddamn fucking pod. Where can they find you, Jordan? We're wrapping things up for today. Where can they find you? That old bullshit on podcast. It's like, well, www.pre-script.com. It's like, fuck, pre underscore script. It's like, goddamn, succinct. Concise, the yada yada, if you will. Yes. Get to the fucking point with Please email. do. Friends of mine, close friends, and like don't make law from bad cases. Hybridperformancemethod.com. Holy oh. dude, every time I got an email oh. stuff, I just I, I just send her a voice note because I know it pisses her off as much as it pisses you off. Because I can't hybrid performance method yeah. XB Alidocious. Like, what is this fucking email address? It's, I'm not gonna give out their email address, but blank at hybridperformancemethod.com. It's like you're joking me. Yeah. Get to the fucking point. 
right? So succinct email address, you're on Google domains, from Google domains, you can pick what type of website you want to build. Mm -hmm. You can integrate Wix. Junta, if you go to the functional you're looking at a Wix website. Check, yeah. check out Junta's page. If you go to the muscledoc.com, that is a WordPress site. Yours is Alora did it. Yeah. And that's the business play. He doesn't know because he doesn't fucking have to know. Yeah. Because guess what? He was invested. And because I like that's a good contrast, right? Because you were at the point where your business was you understood your time. Like your unit, one hundred percent, and you're like, All right, this website stuff is going to be too much for me. I need to build out coaching and fucking lead gens and all this stuff. I'm going to find someone. So not only is he committed to the domain name, the G Suite, the the actual website that we're going to build on. Now he went to someone else who goes, okay, this person is going to get this done quicker yeah. than I could have, and it's worth my time because you know how to value your time very much, is, so. which is something that we I think we need to discuss today. So it's like. Build out your website. So Wix, WordPress. I would imagine if you're in the fitness space, Shopify is is a is a is a front runner. Yeah, Shopify. There's also SquareUp.com. SquareUp. I'm gonna shout out SquareUp here. They have an online checkout. Even if you don't have the time to make the website right away, SquareUp allows you to do an online checkout that is literally just, just payment, processing. payment processing. It'll allow you to pull up a really professional picture of whatever your product is. You can then take that link, attach it to a link tree. And then there you go. Yeah. And Square Up is good too if you if you have scheduled products for time. Correct. So I used to use Square in practice. So any clinicians listening. Uh, and it also allows you to pay up front. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you have an in-person service that you're booking as well, you can actually have them book their time slot integrated with your calendar and have them pay up front. Yeah. So you've got plenty of options. Weigh out the pros and cons given what kind of stuff you're going to sell. Downloadable PDF. Shopify has a really good add-on that you can put right in your website. Squarespace does the same. Squarespace is a little bit more uh, advanced. They get really good metrics. So if you're doing, a, if you're projecting a lot of sales, Squarespace is pretty good. But at the back end of those, you're going to want to make sure you have a payment <laughs> payment processor, Stripe, right. or uh, PayPal is the kind of the accepted uh, general one in the fitness industry. From there, we have a website. We have a URL. We have an Instagram account. Now what? Okay. Side note. Put it in your bio. Sure. Yeah. Let's just put it in your and, bio. Okay. Let's talk about this. Don't give me this I don't, Grant Cardone fucking, I help women, oh. women between the ages of 70 to 85 get to the mailbox and back. Like I hate, it's so off-putting this. I, are, I help motivated men in their 40s to get in the best shape of their life. Kill yourself. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> dude, dude, there's just no way to put it. The fuck off with the bio. No one cares about you. No. Here's two things everybody should do. Stop the podcast right now. If your name is coach.something, fuck yourself. Change it. Put your name. <laughs> Step number two. If your bio is I help, blah, blah, shut up. Right. You know what? You want to put the 17 certs you have? Go nuts. That's great. You want to put CSCS CS behind your name? Great. Don't call yourself a coach. It's weird. Don't put I help, blah, blah, blah. Right. I get we do it. I get we identify ourselves by that, but just don't. I think it, that is a long-term play. That is a career move, and it's like, and, and it's, it's going to sound weird coming from me, but I've always worried about the name before the initials, right? Like, I, I get this fancy title for, for what, and sometimes I have no idea. I just sit here and yell with you into these fucking headphones, and hopefully it records, but it's like, always worry about the name before the initials, right? The, if you can build integrity around the name, it's not going to matter. People, someone, someone com commented on a post the other day. It was like, dude, first you're a physical therapist. Now you're a chiropractor. Make up your mind. It's like, dude, I've been a chiropractor the entire time. But it's like, that's not what people know me as. People think I'm a strength coach. People think I'm this, but people know that I'm Jordan. Yeah. Right. And it's like, that's because again, it takes me longer because I don't have this catchy, like, oh, this person is this. It's like, no, I'm Jordan. I'm Jordan, and you can build a sustainable brand and following around being the same person you are in real life as on the internet. You would never walk up to someone and be like, I'm so-and-so, right? I'm coach, whatever. And like, I understand the irony of me coming from like the muscle doc back in the Dizzy, but like number one is your name. The integrity you build around your name will then be like pervade through the products and services that you provide. So I'm definitely with you on that. I'm 100% with you on the on the bio thing. Yeah. You are the owner or founder or proprietor. Yeah, director. Whatever, of director. Optics played up. Optics. Right? Like this is, you are the El Presidente, El Jefe, whatever of the company that you own. Mm -hmm. Under Because that does a few things. If you have a title, it means there might be someone else out there with another title. Correct. Right? Like, and don't be done with it. CEO, 
unless you're taking the piss. Do you understand? Again, this is where like fitness business and actual business yeah. comes in, right? Like, when you incorporate, like I have a CFO and a COO, mm. so that kind of makes sense. But if you're like a one-stop shop, it's like, and I don't even put CEO. It's like I don't know. It's a company I founded or owned or whatever. Something. But it's like use that as a point of optic and make it be real, not this like you said. I help women yeah, between twenty to thirty grow the best. Like, yeah, get the fuck out of here, right? You and everyone else. It's such a, it's such a bad play out of the gate. So we had the bio stuff kind of down yeah. to the point. Like, don't be just like, what do you own? What do you do? Yeah. What's your whatever? Where do you live? That's a that's a pretty good one. Your location very can be important. helpful, and then your link tree. Yeah, great. Your picture. Keep your picture consistent. Yeah, right. So if you're gonna change it, I would advise once maybe twice a year tops i've kept the same profile picture for me for probably the last three or four years because it's consistent people like familiarity that is really your outward facing logo mm -hmm. and if you're going to put your name guess what put a picture of your goddamn face yes right do not put a picture of your logo oh. if you are doing like do not put a picture unless you run like prescript is prescript and that's a business that's not me and it's purposefully not me because i didn't want it to be because yeah. i already have a me business right so put a picture of your goddamn face not your logo if people, when, and we know this from selling training in person, they're not buying training. No. They're buying you. Correct. So it's like, fucking let them know what they're buying. Yeah. If you don't like what you see in the mirror, it's sweatpants walking in the door. I wonder if he's smelly. It's like, go do something about it. Yeah. You're too few pounds overweight, go drop a few pounds. You want to get bigger arms, go get bigger arms. Because that is, that's your first impression, right? So moving past that, down into content, we're on Instagram. I want to make money. How do I, how do, I do this content thing? Okay, so the way I look at content is Jordan's got a really good way of explaining it, but the way I look at it is when I post to my feed, I'm posting with the sole intention that the people who follow me will want to share it. So it's usually a very striking photo. It's followed by a caption that asks a question of the reader. It's going to inspire them. It's probably going to have some type of one-liner at the end. They're going to be fired up. They're going to immediately go share to story themselves. They share me. So when I post content, I post it with the sole purpose of it being shared. Understanding how to track these metrics is big, right? So if you don't, obviously this should go without saying, if you are running a business, you should have a business account. Have a business account and have it open. This private stuff, a barrier to entry. Yeah. This is an objection I need to overcome. Do I need, do I want to hit follow? That's an extra click. Like, what are you doing? If you're on private, like, get the fuck out of here. Get off your high horse. Just go on public. Set it to a business account. Mm. From the business account, you'll then be able to track metrics. Here's a post. Put it up. And it's like, I do stuff in a similar manner to you. You go view insights. Click underneath the post. And then it gives you how many likes, how many comments, how many shares, how many saves. Right? So this is really what you're after. So your call to action, and I'm with you on this, and it's changed over time, has gone away from tag a friend. And it's share this with a friend. Like, look, people, if you ask people, Good Life Sales 101, we used to sell tanning at the Good Life that yeah. I used to work at. And the sales thing, they said, look, if you ask 100 people, 10 will say yes just because you asked them. Yeah. Right? So if your reach is no longer the, the 150 check-ins on your shift at Good Life in Tecumseh Mall, your shift is now 24-7, worldwide, 365, however many thousands of people follow, you ask them to do something, especially something like share it rather than tag. But, oh, okay. And they just hit the little share button and off it goes, yeah. right? So outside of that, moving away from posts, I want to get back to the just overall principles of content creation. But next to that, what's my next play? So I go, so the way I look at it as po <coughs> posts to feed are follower acquisition. Posts to story are follower engagement. Right. So my posts to feed are follower acquisition via someone sharing it. And then in my story, I use the multiple engagement tools, even just me, to engage the audience that I currently have. So the way that I look at it is I don't post to my feed things that are ultimately that educational. I don't really answer any questions there. Because what I'm doing is I'm paying back the social capital I gained from people that followed me via posts to then engaging them in the story. So Q&A. So what I listen to on Spotify, to a video of me working out, to a picture of me programming. And if you realize the one thing I do, my biggest behavior on, on social media is I post to my story every single day at a high volume. Reason being, the more I post to my story, the more people see it, the more people check into it, the closer and closer I arrive to that first four stories you see when you open Instagram. 
So I want to be, my main goal is when you wake up, I'm the first person you see. When you go to bed, I'm the last person you see. Because eventually, at some point, that story will be a call to action for a product I have, and you're going to click on it, and the first thing you're going to see is coach with me. Right. And I think pushing that into the story is is creating a habit for long-term success because we're minimizing clicks in the story. Correct. Right? So when we build an audience with our posts and our feed, we, we engage that audience on our story. Once we get to a point where we can just swipe straight to there, that's we've diminished another barrier of entry. Mm-hmm. Right? So getting people, transferring them from... You know, it, and again, we talked about this in the non-recorded podcast and we'll bring it up now. It's like understanding pre-contemplation, contemplation, action, yeah. right? We're trying to get them, someone following you and sees you, like, you know, the, 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 the three yeses or the three touch points. It's like, you know, they see you on a podcast or they, they see you on your friend's post or they sh- you get shared because of the stuff you're putting in your feed. Then someone hits follow, right? That's one, that's one yes, yes, right? Then they like a couple of your photos. That's another yes. Then they engage to you on a story of something that you want or something that they want or a service you provide. You get that third yes and you're likely to be able to then acquire. Correct. Right? So we, we've, we've, um, we've, we've engaged with the social yeah. and then, <laughs> and then we can go from there and be like, okay, let's say I have a call to action. Let's actually make some fucking money off of this pursuit. Yeah, exactly. Like acquire, engage, retain, acquire via posts, engage via stories. If someone engages with you in a Q and a with a question, that's basically your third. Yes. So follow like Q and a question is the last third. Yes. The fourth. Yes. Is you responding to that Q and a privately and going, Hey man, I tried to answer as best I could in the 10 seconds Instagram provides. If you need a longer answer, let me know. Let's talk about it. That is your permission to help this person. Just like when we were at Good Life, you got to get permission to help somebody with their deadlift. You can't just rock up and be like, you look like a piece of shit. You got to go, hey, man, can I help you with this? They say yes. Now you can sell them whatever you want. Right. And I think doubling back to the content creation, because the acquisition becomes the numbers game. Right. So if you can get a large number of followers, you should be able to monetize better just based off that idea. If you ask 100 people, Correct. if 10 are going to say yes. Now that number, that's a real life metric. Like if you can look someone in the eye and have that conversation and be like, okay, tanning is whatever. Fuck, I don't even remember what it was. And that's an easier conversion to have. 10% isn't obviously great in relative terms, but in the business world, it's actually pretty fucking good. It's amazing. Now, if you're going to start looking at social media conversions, Dude, if you can convert an audience at, if you can convert an audience at two percent, <laughs> yeah, it's like you, you're that you got a license to print money, right? So like two to four percent industry standard conversion is is good. That's a business that'll be viable for a long time, right? So even one percent is going to be good, right? right? So it's just a matter of like growing that audience. Now for me, when it comes to content creation, you grow the audience by providing value. Now you do that by understanding your audience, number one. So engaging with people and understanding what it is that they like and paying attention to the feedback you're getting, using your insights. Yeah. Like, oh, this got shared a lot. This got commented on a lot. This got saved a lot. What are commonalities that we see between posts that get shared, posts that get saved, right? Whenever I do warm up stuff, those get shared, those get saved. Warm up stuff, that's big. Yeah. Motivational stuff. You know, I just tell Huge. people to stop being a pussy sometimes and like man i really need to hear that it's like yeah. yeah dude we all need to hear that you know what i was probably writing that for myself that day too that gets saved that gets shared so it's like okay what do i was starting to see here it's like well i'm starting to see people value desired states that i'm speaking about or speaking on right so you need to look at content creation through the lens of you have a current state of, of a potential client or a follower soon to be a potential client or customer and they have a desired state So they find value in your content by being able to take them from their desired state or their current state to their desired state. Now, the way you do this is you need to know what their current state is and how it is that you can offer them value and bring them to their, their, their desired state. So with me, I've been able to kind of go unmotivated to motivated. Someone comes to my page, maybe because they're unmotivated, Mm -hmm. they desire to be motivated. My content is valuable for them because it bridges that gap from unmotivated to motivated. Another audience, like f- another faction of my audience, a cohort of my audience is people who are injured and they want to be healthy or in pain free. So my content then has to go in and be like, okay, can this bring you from your current state to injured to pain free, right? That is extremely valuable to offer someone for free. 
Someone else might come to me. I am small and I want to get big. Can I create content that's valuable to this person that allows them to better their pursuit of getting small to the desired state of getting big? Mm. I'm weak. I want to get strong. So on and so forth. So you see that. And then understanding your audience, so an avatar of your follower, and then creating content for them. Don't create content for me or Killian. Yeah. For the uh, love of fucking God. That's, that's really, really important, right? So it's remembering... It's not your ideal client. Stop talking about your ideal client. Your ideal client is the person who chooses to pay you, right? You're not out there to impress the people above you. They're not paying you. Oppress the people beside you or below you right. or whatever, however you want to describe that. But it's understanding, like, like you said, your client avatar. Like the Jordan brand knows people who buy Jordans. They don't sell Jordans to people who wear Birkenstocks. Right. They sell it to people who wear Jordans. They know their socioeconomic status, their age, uh, their preferred gender. They understand uh, what they listen to, what they watch, the other brand, preferred brands that they wear. And it's, you need to understand who you're selling to. If your clients are between the ages of 21 and 32 years old and they want a bigger butt and they wear Gymshark and Alpha Elite, well, your content should speak to that audience. It shouldn't speak to guys who want to work on their external rotation, abduction, and flexion. Who gives a fuck about any of those words? They want a bigger butt. Same thing. If your clients are 41 to 50, why are you on Instagram? Get on Facebook. Right. Tag your mom. Go for it. Go nuts. Get out of here. Yeah, and it's, there's, there's a lot to unpack there from like understanding the audience you have and knowing that that'll change over time. Correct. Right? Like, the tutorial videos to me are a, like a business killer. A killer in the sense that like the ROI on this is is a negative because hmm. you're you're not you're not if you know how to value your time, the time it takes to put into all these little things and like every third post is a quote and it's in some things. So it's look at my feed. It's like no one gives a fuck. No one scrolls. Yeah. No one scrolls. Your first six posts, that's all you got. You got high res. Right. Yeah. I want to see fucking 4K. Right, I want to hear good audio. Mm. Right, get a fucking lab mic. Rode makes a cool Go lab mic. It's a wireless jump. It's pretty easy to put together. Use your fucking AirPods and record your audio through that while you're recording on your cell phone. I know plenty of people who great who great quality based off of that. Right, so do you have quality in your posts? Number one, do they bring you from a current state to a desired state, and are you fluctuating the audience you're targeting? Right, because you. You might have a, a very homogenous audience in the sense of what you think from current to desired state, but guarantee you people are going to follow you because you have a few issues that they sort out, mm. right? Like if you're a creator on the internet. So like, I don't want to go motivational across the board. Right? It's not really my jam because it's not why people follow. Like I'm not the strongest guy in the world, right? I'm not, the, I'm not some motivational speaker or any crap like that. I'm not like the best clinician in the world. I'm not the best strength coach in the world or whatever. But it's like, I understand that these are hats that I wear. So I need to know that, look, the goal is to appeal to like 10% of my audience every single time, right? And now, because rather than just 100% of my audience and I just have a 100% homogenous audience, I now have people who follow me for this. Now I have more touch points. Like, oh man, who do you follow that's a strength coach? Well, I follow this guy. And then a chiropractor, oh, who do you follow that's a chiropractor? Well, I follow this guy. So I have a lot of different, like a lot of different people, a lot of different factions or cohorts pointing to me because my content is not homogenous. Because a homogenous audience is usually a small audience, right? So if you can provide value to multiple audiences and do so on a consistently like cyclical basis, mm -hmm. like I will look at it like, okay, this was a motivational. I need something now that's training based or I need something that's injury risk management based or I need something that's uh, like a warm up based or something like that. Knowing how to cycle your content that way allows you to start to cast a broader net, right? And people get hung up on the metrics of likes. It's like, no, no, that's not what we post for. No. Why do we post? We post to share, to post to share, to gain more followers, mm. right? That's the acquisition of more people. So it's like, if you create content that wants to get shared, you're, when people are going to share it, they're sharing it within so many different networks. So if you get a share on a post about, you know, skill acquisition or something like that, then it's like, that's going to go to a strength con conditioning audience that works on that. If you post some photography stuff and you admit it's like, that's a totally different audience. Yeah. Right. And then you know, the photography group's not going to like the skill acquisition stuff, yeah. but it doesn't matter because they're sitting in the top. Right? And when you can offer them something to purchase at a certain point, you're going to have a broader audience to sell to. And that becomes kind of your, your game of numbers there. It's like, okay, I have more followers. I have an increased likelihood that if I'm providing these followers value, that they're going to then click through and purchase something I'm selling. Exactly. It's not that difficult. It's not. This is just Instagram. We could do this for YouTube. We yeah. could do this. Because like, like you alluded to, right? Like if you're a mom... If you're a targeting an older audience, LinkedIn and Facebook might be more your jam. Sure. Right? If you're targeting females, 
right? Now, like, there are different platforms. Like, I know, like, uh, like Pinterest. I don't know how the fuck you'd ever do it on Pinterest. I don't know the platform well. But Pinterest is a much more female-dominated platform than Instagram. Yeah. Right? Instagram is like an 80-20 split similar to YouTube. If you look at age demographic in the younger, yeah, TikTok. Yeah. Right? Like if you're dealing with like I'm 25 to 34. Yeah. Right? But if I'm 19 to 24 or whatever that that 10 year that that generation, I would have to be on TikTok. Yeah. Right? Just know where your audience is, know what they want, know how to sell them something, give them something to sell. Yeah. And that's really the nuts and bolts of it. And just be available. Yeah. Like how many people post to their feed every other day or every day? And they never post a goddamn story. Right. Well, I'll tell you exactly what I do when I open Instagram. I open Instagram. I check my DM. I check the like, share, follow page. And I close Instagram. Yeah. I've never, ever scrolled through my feed. So when you post something, you go, did you see that thing I posted? I didn't no. because you didn't put it in your story. Right. And that's your problem. Yeah, it's, 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 you need to clearly delineate, are you a creator? Or are you a consumer? Correct. Right. Like if you are there for business purposes... And, and people get so insi- – like business has such an insidious connotation to it. Yeah. Like it's it's everyone is in part of this. And I was guilty of feeling this way about social media and selling things in general. It's still a little weird to me, but it's like that that gets diminished the more you become confident in your craft. Right? The better job I do, it's like I don't feel weird about this. Yeah, and that's the thing with imposter syndrome, right? Like I always say like if you have imposter syndrome, you probably are one. Right. But the idea is like – and that's not a knock at you if you feel this way – but if you have imposter syndrome, you're sitting in the wrong room. You're at the wrong table. If you feel like you don't fit in, you're probably selling to the people that you shouldn't be selling to. Sure, yeah. Right? Like, don't sell to me and kill it. Exactly. Don't sell to the people that you, you're mentored by. If you learn from somebody every day, don't turn around and then try and sell them a product. Yeah. That's when you feel that way. Sell to the audience that you have. Yeah, I think that's a big thing to delineate is like we can learn from these sources and like me and you do the same. And it's like I don't inherently want because i if i walk into a room full of orthopedic surgeons like hey guys hip stability like excuse me like, exactly like i sit in the fucking corner shut the fuck up yeah right? and then take notes then when i come back to an audience that's you know a bunch of football players it's like hey guys this whatever hip thing oh shit yeah dope let's do it yeah. I, I run i run a four three flat let's go and it's like oh, great i don't need to because but knowing how to look up and and disseminate down mm-hmm. into your audience that'll allow you to just really calibrate where you are yeah right who who is above me academically or through their craft who is and above and below it should not be looked at as a negative sense, no right it's like who who can help me who can i help some people they don't know where they are just identify where who it is you're trying to help and who it is is helping you and then you'll just you'll just magnetically hover in between those two things and then as the people who help you evolve and change and grow and the people you help evolve and change and grow it's like well i guess i'm going this way then i guess i'm trending in this direction right and it's just i think that's one of the big things that people have is they don't they, they, everyone wants to swing for the fence right everyone wants to be coaching like the pro athletes like the baseball players and football players it's like look man we weren't doing this like, we weren't this is not how we started no like, my, you gotta pay your dues man my like, first client ever wanted to do battle ropes and she was a nurse and she showed up to one out of every five sessions right you know what I mean? And it's like, uh, and, and like you said, like I downplay how busy I am. And it, it, it's true to some extent. Like what you don't see is there's nine hours of talking on Zoom every day. Like every day from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., I sit on a computer and I talk on Zoom. And then for the other six hours of that same day, I'm probably answering emails and answering DMs and following and liking and sharing other people's content because right. that's my job. But it's like, this is an eight-year journey to a point where I get to kind of sit at a table with new people. Right. But day one of that journey, I wasn't, my goal wasn't to get on a podcast. This is a weird goal I heard the other day. And this is the last thing I kind of want to say about this, is remembering, like you said, the value of your time and what is monetized, just like making a tutorial, is your goal should never be to get on a podcast. A podcast should be a consequence of all the things you achieved. Right. It's like build a business model, credibility, and reach uh, well enough that somebody reaches out because you offer them like or greater value to their reach. Right. But the idea that you want to sit around here with fucking headphones on and throw a podcast into the innumerable pit of podcasts that exist on the internet is insane. Yeah. You're not the flashlight. No one is paying you. 
And it's going to get to – because you know you get to a point where it's – like one of my goals was to do less podcasts. Oh. It was like literally it's like – because – and like obviously it's different with mine. But being on other people's podcasts, I think like I'm not seeing that value return, right? I'm not seeing that value return from my time. So it's like as a challenge as we wrap this up and, and depending on our feedback on this, we'll probably end up doing another one and going a little bit more in depth on this and talking about some business practices and things like that. As a challenge to you guys listening, put a dollar figure on your time. Yeah. Message it to us if you want. Sure. But you're curious because like, again, something that I struggle with continuously, um, but knowing how to value your time is, is a meta conversation to business regardless of the business you're in. But I would say because the time traps that exist with social media and the inextricable link between the fitness business and social media, um, understanding how to accurately value your time. And if we know you and you listen to this and you're interested in our opinion on your time uh, and you want to message us uh, at Killing Hamilton or at the underscore muscle underscore doc, fuck it. I hate my yeah. handle so much. Message us and we'll, we'll give you an appraisal of what we think your time is worth as a coach. Yeah. Especially it, a lot of you guys taking the level. It's like you've invested your time into becoming a better coach. It's like you should probably charge accordingly. And to take that one step further, um, if you want to message me, Killian.Hamilton, uh, send me how much you want to make a day and we'll figure out how you can do it. Yeah, super easy. But it's a conversation that's tough to have, but it's a conversation that's necessary to have. It's the only conversation worth having. For, for a lot of you guys out there who are good at your crap, it is, it is the life preserver. It is what you need to be able to go help other people. Like if you are struggling in your business, you cannot effectively help other people. No, like right now you have the skill to help people, but you may not have the skill to build a platform to help people. Right. And the, the lesser that skill is on the business side, the less the motivation to go out and intrinsically help people who need it. Right.